And this is where it all began, with the original Mount Baker Marathon. Legend has it that six loggers argued the merits of two trails to the top of Mount Baker. Which was faster, the Glacier or the Deming Trail? Well, what better way to find out than to hold a race? So in August of 1911, a committee was formed and 22 men signed up for the first Mount Baker Marathon. Be advised these were hardened woodsmen. These were no weekend joggers. It was decided that those taking the Glacier route would leave town on the Bellingham Bay and British Columbia Railroad. Those favoring the Deming Trail would leave in automobiles, streamlined especially for the race by the local Deal and Simpson Ford Motor Company. It was reasoned that a nighttime start would allow the fastest climb, since the mountain snow would be hard at night and soft for sliding down in the morning. The whole community turned out in force to watch as two of those contestants, who were to play the most exciting roles in this new marathon, charged off in opposite directions. Joe Galbraith, a 27-year-old farmer, was bound for Deming. He tore out of town in a modified Ford with car dealer Hugh Deal hard at the wheel. Joe and his driver started the rough 27-mile trip to the base of the mountain. Here, Joe would break into what was called the human dog trot to the top of the mountain and then back to the car. Meanwhile, 20-year-old logger Harvey Haggard had boarded the train on Railroad Avenue. The old number three would carry Harvey the 47 miles to the bottom of the Glacier Trail. Here, he too would dog trot in the dark to the summit and back to the train. By the time the sun rose the next morning, word had it that Harvey Haggard was well ahead of his best rival, Joe Galbraith. As Harvey ran those last yards to the waiting train, he threw away his alpen stick in joyous anticipation of a rest and a rub down on the train ride back to town. He knew he was in the lead. Now, there had been announcements in all of the papers about the race. Farmers had even been warned to keep all their livestock tied up to avoid the hazards of fast traffic. But as happy Harvey Haggard came tooting around the corner near Maple Falls, his train barreled straight into an 1,800-pound red bull. As the papers told it, turned the train turtle. No reports were given on the condition of the bull. Well, everyone crawled out of the wreckage to look the situation over. No one was hurt, just dazed and somewhat upset over losing the race. That's Harvey there in the blanket. Why the blanket? Well, he was enjoying his rub down in the nude and had quite an awakening. As people stood around in shock, someone realized Harvey might still have a chance at the money. If only he could scrabble his way back to town. The engineer telephoned ahead to have an auto at the ready for the last leg, but Harvey's adventures were not quite over. He went from breakneck speed in a horse-drawn buggy to a frisky saddle horse. So frisky, in fact, that it threw him before he finally made it to the car. Meanwhile, Joe Gilbreth was on his way down the Deming Trail. As he came down the path, folks cheered him on to the bottom where Hugh Deal was waiting. And as he went of that last leg of the race, Joe Galbraith didn't know it, but he was about to win the first Mount Baker Marathon. For his efforts and that little bit of help from the 1,800-pound bull, Joe got himself $100 and the Mount Baker Trophy, held here by his wife, Claire. They held the Mount Baker Marathon again in 1912 and then again in 1913 but decided to put an end to it when Victor Galbraith, Joe's cousin, fell during the night into a crevasse and was almost lost to the mountain. And so, in a sense, the original Mount Baker Marathon started and ended with the Galbraiths. Joe passed on in 1959, but his widow Claire still lives on the old homestead in Acme. She talked about how she felt and then about how Joe might feel about the present day ski to sea race. I think it's rather terrific that it's kept up from year to year, really. Uh, it shows people are interested. But I think he'd be kind of proud of the fact that the people were carrying on and because he was rather sports-minded. When Joe Gilbreth won the 1911 Mount Baker Marathon, his record time was 12 hours, 20 minutes. But in 1979, the winning time was 4 hours, 46 minutes. And the team that made that first place time was Hot Times from the greater Seattle area. Of course, things have changed since 1911, not the least of which is the course. 